Good morning, folks. We've got science news, earthquake update. We'll peek in on the upper level patterns and learn some solar physics as well. We are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and we find that the last day on the sun was quiet and calm from the perspective of sunspots, solar flares, and once again, we have not seen any eruptive behavior whatsoever from the plasma filaments. That one filament we've watched the last few days is partially collapsing with the southern reach still turning in, but that southern reach is likely too far south to affect Earth even if it does erupt. We're going back to the 193 angstrom view for a moment to take a closer look at the dark coronal holes. One facing Earth, one coming in at the left side, and then the permanent coronal holes at the north and south pole. This is what the magnetic structure looks like there, the polar magnetic fields reaching out just like the magnetic field of Earth emanates from the polar region. But from the coronal holes, we also see open field lines streaming out as well. This is where the interplanetary magnetic fields are found that connect the planets to the sun, always at those coronal holes. Some stream away, and others form the return fields coming back from as far out as the edge of the solar system. These ultra-huge and powerful fields are how we predict the ebb and flow of magnitude 6 seismicity as they must interact with Earth as well, fluctuating usually on a days to weeks basis. These two coronal holes are strong indicators, and we are seeing the blood echoes ramping up, including four in Oceania yesterday, with one of them hitting magnitude 6 range, albeit barely. Not nearly enough pressure released in this event just yet. Quickly peeking at the solar wind shows quiet conditions in geospace. The solar wind streams from the Earth-facing coronal holes should impact early this coming week. They won't be major, but they will be obvious amidst this calm telemetry, as a density bump followed by a ramp up in plasma speed. Again, due this week. You may have heard a cool down is finally due for the United States, and it is going to be delivered by this dip in the jet stream. We'll show three days forecast of it here, and this allows the cooler northern air to reach down further than it normally would. The higher altitude polar patterns are holding for now. No vortex formation yet in the north, probably about a month away, while the south is still very strong, but is now joined by a companion cell of rotation, below the big one there, which will trigger its seasonal wind down soon. Let's go to asteroids. Ryugu and the Hayabusa 2 lander from Japan. Their findings indicate that it is a leftover from the youthful solar system and is the result of a cataclysmic disaster amidst the early planets, forming from their debris. Up next, we're talking multiple space weather impacts and a confirmation of the non-linearity of their combined effects. What does that mean? Basically, it's like mixing medication. The effects are not additive, but multiplicative, if not exponentially scaling when you have multiple events. One of those types of events is the solar flare, radio burst, and coronal mass ejection, and the flare itself may be able to be much better predicted than scientists had ever imagined. They are working on a 20-hour lead time for major solar flares, which in the world of severe space weather feels like forever. We've got the fourth confirmation out of China that tree rings follow the solar cycle. They also note appreciable effects from El Nino and the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, but there are already dozens of studies showing the sun's effect on those as well, making for all three identified drivers of tree ring variability either directly or indirectly modulated by the sun. Last but not least, we usually share dark matter debunking from lab work or from deep space searches for gamma rays resulting from annihilation, but today we are right back at the sun. The Axion proponents believed they'd catch the sun releasing them, but the most sensitive experiment ever has found absolutely nothing, and I'm absolutely not shocked. Website members, it was a very short podcast yesterday, but I hope to make it up to you with a double deeper look release. It is fairly critical we look at two articles from the August 22nd morning show to see how they intertwine in the arena of the great cosmic disaster. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.